Hi everybody, welcome to the workshop. I'm working on the hydrofoil again. Uh, and thank you everybody for sticking around for such a long time with this project. I know it's been a while. I started in 2017 and I still haven't finished it yet, but we're close and I do want to finish it now. Um, and what sparked this new motivation to work on it was that Felix from Austria, uh, he created this remote, Felix remote, and he sent me a message if I wanted to check it out. And I thought, wow, this is like the perfect opportunity to actually keep going or get going with this project again because the remote was um, a little bit of an issue that uh, the waterproof casing that I had for this always teared. And this is 3D printed, waterproof. And the cool thing is it uh, works with the VESC. So you can plug this in right there and it can read off the current and voltage and all of that stuff. And it also comes with a GPS so you can tell how fast you're going. Really, really cool. Uh, can't wait to check this out. First, we need to work on this stuff. This isn't all waterproof yet. I need to waterproof it. And these connectors aren't waterproof either. But I installed these valves so I can pressurize it and see uh, where the bubbles are coming out. And we need to strap this down inside of the hydrofoil. Uh, overall, these two things are quite heavy. Not sure if the hydrofoil is going to lift up, but at least I want to get it working and functionally. And for that, we also need the motor, which is like the main part. We need to put these cables inside of the mast. This is a very, very small, but... Uh, I think we can fit it in and we need to attach this to here. So we need to find out what profile this is, 3D print something that clamps around and then at the end we can screw this motor to it. But the motor is super heavy. I think it's like five kilograms probably. Yeah, anyway, let's get going and uh, try to figure this out. It looks like I made a mistake <laughs> somehow. <laughs> There's a gap in between. Uh, I, I, I took a picture of this and put it in CAD and calibrated the length. I think I took the wrong length. But the profile fits really well. So I went back to the computer, recalibrated and printed this test profile um, to save a little bit of material in case it's wrong again. And this fit pretty well. Then I printed the real thing. It's just PLA because that's super easy to print with and in my opinion it's plenty of strong enough. The nose cone is hollow because it doesn't have to be that strong and I'm gluing it on with super glue. And that sticks really well to PLA. Fits very well. Just need to sand this down a little bit and uh, make these a little bit bigger because they came out smaller than I designed them. There's a bit of a step here, so I'm filing it. If this was a piece of metal or wood, it would be much easier to sand, but PLA doesn't really want to be sanded, so I used the file to actually remove some shavings. And now I'm marking the position where I want the hole for the cables to be. Uh, and I thought the easiest way to cut this out would be with the chop saw. And that was really easy. It's just a little bit dangerous, but you know, I've got some experience with the chop saw. For, so for me, it's okay, but be really careful here. You can also use a Dremel or something like a small cutoff disc. Uh, and I could pop this out and I use a die grinder to make these edges really nice and smooth but you could also use just some tape over them uh, that would be easier or maybe some kind of plastic that you just uh, pop over there so um, the cables don't rub on that. That would be kind of catastrophic for the VESC. So now I can mount everything and first I need to get the cables in so I put some soapy water in there so they glide along. I had to remove some of the heat shrinking but uh, there was actually enough space to get these cables through. I wasn't expecting that. And now we can mount the motor. This is aluminium and this is stainless steel. And in between you should always put some copper paste. That way you can remove them later on. I don't know if it limits the corrosion, but even if it corrodes, uh, it's still easy to get these back out. It's a messy job, but somebody's got to do it. And just in case you're looking for any of these parts that I'm using here, just go on uh, foil.zone. Uh, it's like a forum where everybody shares their experience building these hydrofoils and there's the Max Maker build thread uh, where I put all the information in, the motor, the cable and so on, all the files. And um, you, can, you can download everything basically. Because uh, I get a lot of questions about how to make this. You know, I'm experimenting with this as well. So I don't know what's the best way to do stuff. Uh, I'm using just standard wood screws to screw this together because that's just easier. Uh, you have really big threads in there and I think it's a little bit stronger than using something like metric screws. Also getting metric screws in 70 or 80 millimeter lengths is a little bit uh, difficult. I don't have that many around, but I have plenty of wood screws um, and they go in really easy. I don't plan to take this apart very often and I can just pre-print something new, of course. So everything is on, put the wing on here and I noticed that this wing is tiny in compared to the wings that you get nowadays. So I bought this in 2017 and it was a version from 2016 and nowadays the wings are like twice as wide. 
So I'm kind of expecting that this might not be big enough to lift me out of the water. We might have to build a bigger wing in the future. Uh, we're gonna see what's going to happen. Um, putting this cap on is really easy. I just had to drill a hole in the top for the cables and the cables are just about long enough to go into the ESC box. These screws were a little bit difficult to get in. Uh, so I put some copper paste in there straight away. I noticed a little gap here. Uh, this would be a room for improvement later on. Uh, to make it a little bit more uh, aerodynamic. So here's the board and what's left to do is connect maybe these LEDs, but these are not essential right now. Uh, make sure we can use these uh, holes with the threads so we can put some strapping around and add the ESC of course and get everything waterproof. Next step is to attach the foil to the board. But first I would like to weigh everything. So I set up a scale here. Now we've got the electronics with the batteries and everything. So that's nine kilograms. Let's take this off, put the wing on here, seven kilograms, and the board itself, it feels very light. Oh, six kilograms again, 6.2. So in total we have seven and six is 13, and nine is about uh, 22 kilograms. So I don't know if that's heavy or not, uh, it's definitely not on the light side. But I can confirm that having this cable channel is very easy to organize everything. There's enough room for the cables and getting it in is, is quite easy. So that's something I would do again in the next build. Uh, in the next build, I would probably put all the electronics inside the board itself to make it much more lightweight. So you don't need all this waterproofing and so on. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm learning with this build. So without the electronics, it just about balances on its own, which is quite nice. Uh, next, we need to add the electronics and luckily for that, I now have a forklift, so we can put it on here, hopefully, so it cannot fall over. And this is it with the electronics in. And now we can make these connections and put some shrink tube on here. So this is the receiver for the remote. Uh, and it's super, super smart. This can connect to your phone, same as the um, remote. And it can, you can put updates on here over the Firo app, which is really nice. Uh, so you don't have to connect this with USB to your computer like you used to have with you know lots of devices that need updates. And this just does it over Bluetooth, which I think is a super nice feature. Uh, and it also has an SD card slot, so you can log your rides. So afterwards, you can see how fast you went and how far you went and all this kind of stuff. And it has a GPS, so that's attached with this little wire here and this little adapter. And you can really easily connect this to your VESC, that's the motor controller. So it comes with these two cables. And you just plug in here and then you're good to go. Um, and it should work straight away. You just need to adjust the board rate, I think. But I need to, um, yeah, put this onto my computer and then do one final setup uh, to make sure everything is right. And then we can test it. This is the app for iOS and Android and you can connect to the remote and then push some updates on there. It works really well. Uh, it's sped up here a little bit for the video, uh, but it's working really well uh, and I'm happy that it's so easy because I really don't like figuring out uh, all this stuff. Now I'm pairing it to the receiver so they have a connection um, and that just works. This is the first version of the Felix remote. The current one that you can buy has a much nicer display as well. So this receiver will go into this little box to make it a little bit splash proof. I also made this uh, cap which uh, didn't print so well. But anyway, it is going to go into the plastic housing because in the metal housing it won't have signal. And to connect them I'm using a cut off HDMI cable. It's something I learned over the years, always get the black silicone. If, unless you're doing white tiles, always go with black. So I'm cutting these cables into two parts to put some of this HDMI cable in between to get them from the metal box to the plastic box so uh, the receiver has signal. And I'm using these connectors that you just crimp together with pliers. I didn't solder these cables together because I was afraid that some solder could drop down onto the PCB. And then you can apply some heat uh, and that uh, shrinks the heat shrinking and makes them a little bit splash proof. Not that it matters here because we shouldn't have water in this box ever. So at the end of this, I'm testing continuity on every single cable just to see that I connected them uh, in a proper way. And now some tape to make everything a little bit more neat. And there we go. Now we can apply this uh, cable to the receiver 
Uh, and this receiver has to be in a plastic housing and if you have a carbon fiber board it also has to be somewhere where there's uh, plastic around because carbon fiber is conductive just like a copper uh, and that would just shield the signal. So now the electronics are done and we can put everything together finally. I have these silicone tubes around the um, soldered uh, connectors for the main motor cables in case they come apart if they heat up uh, they still be isolated. So now we can grab some straps and strap down the electronics to the board. If you remember, we put back in the day when we built this uh, board, we put some aluminium inserts in there with threads and they have wax in them to protect them from the epoxy. So we can remove all the wax, uh, clean it up and then just screw these straps into these uh, threaded holes. Uh, and I needed a hole in the middle, so I heated up a nail, really nice uh, glowing hot to put the holes in here. That's the only way really you can't drill these holes. And they also are protected that way from the um, from fraying. So of course stainless steel screws, stainless steel washers and some copper paste so they don't corrode. We're getting much closer to finishing this. Uh, now we have to check for waterproofness and straight away we can see some bubbles with the soapy water. So these were some holes. I don't remember why I drilled them, but I need to close them. And I thought I had closed them, but they weren't really closed. So I applied some more heat to kind of get them to close. And then we're also testing the ESC by pressuring it with this uh, bicycle pump. And I noticed that these cable glands are not really pr waterproof. So I put some silicone in there and tightened them up. Uh, and this doesn't look nice, but at least now it's fully waterproof, so we can close this off. And while this lid was off, I also polished it a little bit to make it look nicer, because this is a zinc and it corrodes really easily, so over the years it became less shiny. And we need to mount this down as well, so I'm just using some of this uh, Velcro, I'm gluing it on with super glue, and some on the side of the board uh, to hold it on. Uh, this should be enough, I think, the cables kind of hold it in place anyway. And of course this box will be submerged later on in water to cool it down. So back in the day when I was starting this project, uh, I was looking around to see who could supply these uh, traction pads. And I came across a startup from Australia called Pad Traction, which unfortunately is not around anymore. But it was uh, started by Ryan Jones from Australia. And he was nice enough to send me some of these traction pads. And uh, since then he's not doing this anymore. He's only focusing on his bikini business, which is Moana Bikini. Go check them out. They make really nice bikinis in all sizes, which I find very inclusive and the way it should be. This is a cable organizer that you can um, get on Amazon and put it behind your computer to nicen up the cables a little bit and that's what I did here. Uh, and the last step to finishing this build project is to put two zip ties on this so it doesn't come off again. And now it's time to get it out of the workshop and into the garden to take some of these beauty shots. I think it looks super nice, especially with the foam padding. Yeah, the mask should maybe get a better paint job that uh, fits the uh, color of the board but I can do it at a later stage because I suspect that this wing might be too small, especially because I haven't uh, gotten any lighter <laughs> since the pandemic started. Um, and the board is a little bit on the heavy side, I think. So I might have to swap out the wing at some point um, and then it will be a different color anyway and I can paint that and I can sell this wing maybe. So yeah, it's super symmetric. The CNC did a really good job with this, um, but I don't think it matters that much anyway, because at the end of the day, when you're flying, uh, the board won't be touching the water anymore. So uh, the shape of the board, I don't think is that critical. You could make it just a square block. So let us make sure the motor is actually spinning up with the Felix remote. Uh, put some batteries in here. And if you want to know more details about uh, all the electronic stuff, you can check out just the previous videos. There are also instructables included. And here I'm powering up the relays, so the motor has power. And this is the Felix remote. This is a really nice trigger. It feels really good. Stainless steel spring, of course. And you can charge it over the back with a magnetic connector. And the newer version also has a better display that looks a bit uh, nicer and a bit brighter in sunlight. So this is like an early prototype, I think. Uh, you keep pressing the plus button to arm it. Uh, and then you can see all the stats. Uh, you can see the voltage of your pack. You can see the current. And here I'm powering up the motor for the first time with Felix remote uh, and with everything finished. And it doesn't draw a lot of current because it's not in the water, it doesn't have any resistance. And you can see here with the batteries inside, the center of gravity is pretty much in the center of the board. 
I'm really sorry for not testing this out straight away, but I just don't have the time at the moment. You know, I've got work to do to pay my bills. It's not like YouTube is paying me any uh, significant amount for these videos. This is just a hobby project basically, and I'm sharing it with you guys. I will get this in the water fairly soon and then do a whole video just about uh, trying to learn how to fly this thing. And also if all of the electronics still work in the water and if it's powerful enough uh, and anything I can learn from that, I will share with you. Thanks for sticking around for such a long time. It was really nice uh, to read all your comments, get all the feedback. Uh, and whenever I needed some help, somebody was there to give some advice. So um, that was very nice. Thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff. And I hope I inspired you to make something yourself today. See you next time.